Investing is affected by many external factors, and one of the biggest ones is human psychology. There are many biases in the human mind, and that affects your investment decisions, usually for the negative. Just being aware of these common biases can make your investment decisions a lot better and prevent you from making dumb mistakes that a lot of people tend to do. So in this video, I'm going over five of the most common biases in human psychology when it comes to investing. So let's get started. Confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is the tendency to seek out information that confirms your original belief while ignoring information that contradicts your belief. This can affect your investment decisions because individuals tend to seek out information that supports their investments and not the information that contradicts their investments so they don't get both sides of the story. For example, someone may have bought a new stock and then seek articles that support the company that they just bought. So they'll see all the good stuff about this company, but they will ignore the articles that say maybe the stock is not a good buy. This also causes investors to hold on to losing positions longer and prevents them from moving that money into a better opportunity. This is known as the endowment effect. The endowment effect is when investors place higher value on their investments because they own it, so they think it is more special than it actually is. This causes people to hold on to investments that are in the negative and have a belief that is going to come back to what they originally bought it at because it is in their eyes more special. Here's what you need to do to avoid the confirmation bias. You wanna be open-minded and take in all available information, even if it contradicts your investments. Seek out diverse sources of information different than what you originally assumed. This can broaden your understanding and give you a better foundation to make decisions on. A simple way to do this is just a pros and cons chart. The next bias is the overconfidence bias. This is the tendency for people to overestimate their abilities and knowledge in a specific field, in this case investing. This makes people take excessive risk and make bad decisions based off of false assumptions. Overconfidence bias can cause someone to believe they know much more about investing or the type of investment they are in than they really do, causing them to make bad decisions. This can be shown in the Dunning-Kruger effect. People tend to be extremely overconfident in their knowledge of a subject when in reality they don't know anything. The Dunning-Kruger effect curve was made after social psychologists David Dunning and Justin Kruger created a curve based off of confidence versus competence. People tend to be really confident in their knowledge in a subject when in reality they don't know anything at all. Personally, I was on top of Mount Stupid when I first got into investing. I thought it was a lot easier when I started before I actually did any research. Once I lost money during the GameStop AMC incident, I was quickly at the bottom of the Valley of Despair because I realized I knew nothing about investing and my confidence was down at the bottom. It's been a couple years and I've learned a lot, so I can definitely say I'm in the slope of enlightenment. As the graph would say, because I have learned a lot and my confidence is up, but I'm definitely not at the peak of confidence or knowledge in this graph. Overconfidence bias causes investors to make bad decisions because they downplay the risk, assuming they know more than they actually do. This might cause someone to not diversify their portfolio enough, leaving a lot more risk for uh, intense fluctuation and bigger losses. Here's how you avoid overconfidence bias. You have to remain humble and just realize your limitations and lack of experience. You want to seek out diverse sources of information and learn as much as you can from different perspectives. You need to take a disciplined and long-term approach to investing and think smarter. This can help you mitigate the overconfidence bias many people experience. The next type of bias is herding bias. This is a bias where people tend to follow the herd and make investment decisions with a group of people just because there's a lot of people making a certain type of investment and not doing their own analysis or decision making based on the information available. This can lead investors to buy or sell assets based on others' actions and not on their own analysis, causing the market to make irrational changes which can lead to a bubble or a crash. An example of a herd of people making investment decisions based on following the herd would be like the AMC GameStop crash. A lot of people on Reddit decided that it was a good idea to pump money into GameStop to bring the price up really high while all the hedge funds were shorting and it would make a short squeeze where everyone in the Reddit group would make a lot of money. So a lot of people started buying GameStop and AMC, but it ended up crashing and a lot of people lost money, including myself. So in the end, the hurting bias was very bad for our investment portfolios. 
Hurting bias can be reinforced by social proof where people think that someone else making an investment knows more than they do, so they should just follow blindly. This can create a feedback loop where investors keep investing based on others' actions without taking their own judgment into account. To avoid the hurting bias, it is important to make investment decisions based on your own research and get a lot of diverse information sources to do your research on and make sure you're not investing based on the actions of one person or a group of people. The fourth type of bias is the loss aversion bias. This is the tendency for individuals to feel the negativity of a loss more than the positivity of a gain. So for example, if someone were to lose $100, it would be worse emotionally for them than if they made $100. This causes investors to be more risk adverse when it comes to losses than when it comes to gains. So investors could tend to hold on to losing positions for longer, hoping that it turns to its original price so they can sell out when they should be putting their money in a better opportunity instead of holding on to the losing asset. This causes people to miss out on gains and compound their losses, which is very bad. It is important for investors to maintain a long-term view in their investments. It is important to focus on the overall investment portfolio returns rather than the single investments in there. It is helpful to establish clear investment goals beforehand and stick to a long-term strategy that you picked beforehand. The fifth type of bias is anchoring bias. This is the tendency for people to rely too heavily on the first piece of information they get and use it as an anchor for all their subsequent decisions. The anchoring bias can cause investors to become fixated on the initial price they bought in their investment and not take into account market fluctuations or other relevant factors. This can cause investors to miss out on opportunities and take more losses. For example, if a stock was purchased at $50, an investor might hold on to it longer, even if it goes down all the way to $25, because they are fixated on that anchor price of $50. This can cause them to hold on to that position for too long and increase their losses and miss opportunities where they could have put that money elsewhere. To avoid the anchoring bias, it is important to remain flexible when investing and be open to changing market conditions. This involves setting clear investment goals and setting a long-term perspective. It is also good to have a diverse source of information so you're not overly influenced by one piece of information. The most important thing is to be aware of these biases. A lot of them have the same solutions. Have diverse sources of information, maintain long-term perspective, set clear investment goals, and establish some stop losses to prevent big losers. If you're looking for a simple investment strategy that takes out a lot of the emotion, check out this video. I go over dollar cost averaging and how that can help you make long-term investing decisions without taking too much risk and reducing volatility. Other than that, peace.